They killed my girlfriend. And no matter how hard I try, I just can't let go. Did those bastards pay for what they done to you, boy? They paid. Well, good. Honor's being restored, and sure enough, our good Lord will see to it that they burn in hell. You need to move on, partner. Plenty of lookers out there. Find yourself a charming lady friend, even if it costs you a pretty penny. One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust, The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last night. No, please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Sure, I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Then, sure enough, booze put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. <laughs> my second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with her curse. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm Cassidy's slave. He lent me the money for a game deposit, and I lost it all. Now I have to work off my debt. Oh, Cassidy's not your problem, son. It's poverty. 
Sure enough, I had to pay my own deposit this morning to y'all. And then it was just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me my receipts. These are the things I am, boy. Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just put, put it over, over, uh, I think he's, uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no... Who in the hell... Find him. By God, if it ain't the hero of the day. Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. I'll be damned. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> With this and that hat, yes, sir. I'll New really York look the <laughs> Sure enough, I'm fixing to play poker with him. <laughs> Boxing at the Grand Ole Opry? <laughs> I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, nah, but it certainly wouldn't hurt bourbons, to try. That's all. <laughs> anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> the craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny, craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? Not even a Bible. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, 
His female companions have less of a hard time. They smell like a party. Luckily, there was only one Kinney in Farnham's address book. Kinney Eeks, residing at... Cornell Plaza, Manhattan. Stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Don't tell me, Billy Pie. This here is my new friend Father, am I right? Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's a honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Are you going to hand over the gun or not? You know what? I'm starting to think that you're not trustworthy. And I hate wasting my time. Yeah, but the bad thing is, it'll be just three of us playing tonight. Billy Bob? Don't tell me, Billy Pie. This here is my new friend Father, am I right? Sure enough, but your slasher friend sure could learn how to treat his customers. Hey, Billy Bob, come on. This guy is a good guy. He's one of us. My apologies, sir. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's a honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. 
I would if I had a gun on me, but I don't. Are you kidding me? An unarmed Texan? I already told you, I'm not carrying a gun. That doesn't sound like the man Kenny told me about. And you know what? I've had enough. Billy Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me, Billy Bob. This here is my new friend Father. Am I right? Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right? Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Are you going to hand over the gun or not? You know what? I'm starting to think that you're not trustworthy. And I hate wasting my time. Yeah, but the bad thing is it'll be just three of us playing tonight. Billy Bob? <laughs> Don't tell me, Billy Pa. This here is my new friend Father. Am I right? Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right? Are you going to hand over the gun or not? You know what? I'm starting to think that you're not trustworthy. And I hate wasting my time. Yeah. The bad thing is, it'll be just three of us playing tonight. Billy Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Don't tell me, Billy Bob. This here is my new friend Father. Am I right? Sure enough, but your slasher friend sure could learn how to treat his customers. Hey, Billy Bob, come on. This guy's a good guy. He's one of us. My apologies, sir. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. It'll be my pleasure. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. Uh, no offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Well, I'll do what I can. Now you got me worried. Never trust a humble player. The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. Had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas. Well, gambling is legal. You got it wrong, partner. Quince is right. The casino's in Vegas. I, uh, <laughs> I knew it. No, I'm sure it was a town in Texas. He had the funniest little name. Uh, uh... Sometimes you get the feeling that it's all gone wrong. That you've made a terrible mistake. Sorry, did I say sometimes? Huh. No, that only happens once in a lifetime. The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. Had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas. Well, gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> ding Dong! That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs>
Well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. No. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women. They even take our damn names. <laughs> You're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool, and I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Sorry, partner. I can't stand pool. Well, then just come down to drink and drink some more. Well, looks like Farnham won't be venturing into the pool hall business anytime soon. This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. And guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even freaking happen. The good news is that I've almost convinced the governor to let him out of prison on the day of the fight. Under police escort, that is. I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. Billy Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Damn it! What again? How many games have you won in a row, Quince? <laughs> and here I was hoping that Farnham would steal your championship belt. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, hey, hey! By the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, plain bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> The craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fellow's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. Their... Well, she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. That's it, tranquilizers. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on. Come on. Give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Even when you play to lose, it's best to win the occasional hand to avoid suspicion. But with Quince, it was just impossible. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be damned. I don't believe this. See what we mean, Farnham? I still don't get why you keep coming for more, boys. 
I'm starting to think you all lose on purpose. In which case, you're about to have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Farnum. Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with polka. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm, yeah, so how can I be of help? Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxers from official competitions when the managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Those there athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Come on, come on, let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game, unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. Well, if you have a hard time, imagine old Farnum over here. So, uh, Kenny can, can told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. 
Although the communist in me reveled in the sight of a millionaire choking on his own vomit. Even so, I couldn't just stand there and watch him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. something. I don't know how you deal with all of them. All boys? Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. Come on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't put a finger on them until they're 12. After that, well, <laughs> let's just say some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Sooner or later, the police are gonna bust your ass. Quince. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you're as bad at hiding those poor girls as you are at keeping that ace up your sleeve. What? You lying piece of shit. Quince? Uh, don't believe a word he's saying, Frank. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. <laughs> For washing up. It's a deal. And good call, Farnham. I owe you one. Please, take that flying scumbag's tokens. And mine too, if you want them. I'm feeling generous. Hey, turns out the governor accepted my suggestion to let Bobby yell out of prison on the day of the fight. Hey, this is turning out to be the perfect night. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, Though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans.
As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my daily beat. A real shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a beat. Backside. Finally, I need you at the gym now, please. It was like this when I got here. Did you call the police? No, only you. Good. Calm down. I'll take care of this. Had you already finished looking through these papers? I wish. Well, I guess you'll enjoy sorting all this again. What are you doing? Do you like sardines? Excuse me? Do you like sardines? Ugh. Hmm. Looks like the burglar isn't interested in bureaucracy. Not that I suspected otherwise, but it's obvious they weren't looking for money. Did they take anything? No. Although... When you went in the hospital room to get your purse, did you get the gun as well? Yes. Isn't it there? I put it back. I'd rather not go through that again. That's too bad. It looks like they took it. Bingo. What is it? Nothing. Just a freshly signed contract. Is this yours? 
Mm, I think it belongs to the new cleaning lady. Mary just wasn't working out, so she left. Clarice Freeman? Yes. You think she did this? Footprints don't match. Or if O'Leary killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint, or in different shoes. It's pretty clear that Helen Moore's cigarette case was a gift from O'Leary. If she's still in love, why does she claim she hates him? What is she hiding?
Wait here, please. Could be a knife wound. The murder was brutal. Hmm. I can just picture her saying, Honey, I found a job. We're finally going to make ends meet. I want you to call the police, Sonia, and then go straight to a friend's house. Don't even think about going home and definitely don't come back here. I'm... I'm staying at a friend's house. I haven't even set foot in my father's place yet. Good. Do you have the keys? If the murderer didn't find what he was looking for, that might be his next stop. If he hasn't been there yet. For once I had the keys to the place, which meant I wouldn't have to use my lockpicks or...
It looks like Dunn had already begun to move his things. Dunn? Thorpe? Hmm. No idea. And these two? They look familiar. It's hard to believe that a pair of boxing fists could play something like this, although I'm sure he had the lungs for it. As I glanced at the telephone, I remembered the weekly password for O'Leary's illegal gambling operation. Even though I had rejected his reward for telling him about Colbert and his wife, I had managed to make my own dirty money by ratting out the eagle pimp during our poker game. How much damage could a small bet do? Yes. Wild strawberries. Welcome, sir. May I ask for the beneficiary of your bet? I'd like to bet on Sonia Dunn's behalf. Hmm. Event? Stone versus Yale. Madison Square Garden. Got it. Amount? Five thousand dollars. Winner? Yale wins. Place of delivery? I'd seen several locations written out in O'Leary's basement, but I could only remember one, courtesy of my new matchbox. La Iguana Pool Room. All right, sir. Good afternoon. I seem to recall Sonia being mad about the pictures, but who knows?